Hey guys, I'm going to try a different uh, angle and uh, microphone here, so hopefully it'll, you can see plenty. Um, okay, so I have a pretty cool one, a blonde wood duck hen. So I just wanted to show real quick, kind of what we'll be talking about before. Um, I have the paper towel, and now I just kind of want to show how I take that apart, and then obviously the eye ring will be next. So. Uh, a couple pins to hold that in place. And then from here, take the pins out. Pins out first, and then I try to pull kind of at the base there. Get it break. Get it uh, broken away from the the leg. That way it doesn't tear the chip the paint off. And then I'll try to pull straight back. And from there, I just have a few pieces. Yeah, this seems like it looks pretty good on tape. A few pieces of tape. So what we'll do on the eye rings um, for Patterson Outdoors, it asked uh, on which ones. So mainly for commercial mounts, like say for um, it's for wood ducks, male and female. Um, I will say if, if for People that are thinking about doing competition stuff, um, you do need eye rings for everything. In that case, it gets a little bit more intricate, but it would be, um, where are we at? Piece of thread, and then you would just do like a little dab of glue, start it at the corner, and then you just kind of, with a, with a little pen and a little dab of glue, you just kind of go around, um, you know, until you make the shape of the eye ring. And then from there, you would get a uh, a little thing of Elmer's to kind of make the, the ridges or bumps um, to give a little bit of texture. I know some people, they try to um, roll the epoxy sculpt real thin uh, to do eye rings for just all kinds of birds. And uh, you have to roll it so, so thin for it to actually be legitimately um, that size. So now for these... Because this is so important for wood ducks, um, I'll just get you know regular epoxy sculpt. So just make sure when you grab it. So my right hand, my right hand grabbed this one because you don't want to mix them together because then they'll start you know. Left hand will grab this one and get uh, equal parts of A and B. So it's just regular epoxy sculpt. Color doesn't matter. Because uh, you're going to paint over it anyway, so it doesn't. <laughs> what does it matter? But uh, for the whole process, I normally get a little cap full of water, and uh, that way, while I'm working with it, um, I always have a little, uh, like a well to use. Because as I'm putting it on, not only am I going to be using a Q-tip, but I'm going to, you know, I'm going to try to like roll it into like a little bit of a, little bit of a point. Just to kind of help it with, uh, so when it's wet, so when I'm kind of pressing up against the eye, you don't want the uh, epoxy sculpt to stick. So, anyway, that's kind of the deal with that. So, we'll do, as soon as I get this, I just wanted to do everything in real time. Because that's the main thing, uh, you know, I'd lie, I would, I'm hoping that people are able to sit down with whatever task they're trying to do and uh, they can do it at the same time and kind of follow along and I know I've mentioned that quite a few times but I just, I just remember how frustrated I was when looking at videos and stuff and especially on some of the stuff like this like specific techniques and stuff there's a lot less of that out there so hopefully it helps but anyway so I'll set a little piece kind of off to the side, put a little bit of water down, and then just start rolling. Because you want a piece that's not too long, because um, you're, you know, obviously going to use just a section of it for the eye itself. But um, let me see if I have my water bottle here. So just keep one little area wet, and it looks like it's showing up pretty good. So then once I get, uh, let's 
just kind of roll and press, roll and press. And luckily, I mean, wood duck eye rings, when you're mounting a wood duck, um, you know, most ducks, you, you kind of keep the eyes to whatever shape, uh, whatever shape they're going to ultimately be in. Uh, wood duck, you kind of want them to be a little bit more open or more, uh, you know, you just want to be more open. That way you kind of leave room for the eye rings because you don't want to have the eyes where they're uh, kind of say a normal shape like a duck. And then once you put the eye rings in, they, they look like, you know, they either have like a black eye or, or they're, you know, half shut. So, but I'll get this pretty thin and then, uh, You know, and as far as far as like specific size or something, I don't really know how to describe that. But you know, like I said, you can kind of see everything in relation. So I have my chunk over here. My little this will be for the next eye, and then uh, the piece we're going to use. So let me think how I'm going to do this here. All right, so I'm going to get. Uh, just trying to get her on the okay um boy it's kind of hard when you're doing a <laughs> doing a, a video and trying to show something um let's see i'll do i'll do something like that all right so that okay that shows up all right so then what we'll do is we'll have the tweezers We'll have uh, the piece we're going to use, so we'll kind of grab it from the back end. So then pretty much from the start, I'll get my wet Q-tip. So you want to get uh, the corner. Let me. You don't want the Q-tip to be really too wet because you don't want that to get the eye or the feathers around the eye too wet. But I want to get the corner started to where I need it. This is the main thing. And then I kind of hold that as it, it'll bend down. Kind of work that in place like that. Then I'll get my X-Acto. Kind of dip that in a uh, cap full of water. Just to get the blade wet. And then I'll cut that. I'll cut that off. If it moves around, it's no big deal. As long as you have the shape, um, it'll go back down where you put it in place. So, And if you have to trim a little bit at some point, you just want to get where that big piece is kind of no longer an issue. So we kind of got it back in place. Um, I want to press down a little bit just to kind of start getting it where it needs to be. Main thing with these is you want, um, you want the two pieces pieces to meet in the front and then that way um, you can make the juncture or junction right there so I'm gonna go ahead and kind of place and then in the back you want to kind of kind of push that out so it's kind of like you know an oval with the ends kind of having a little bit sharper of a of an ending so I'll use the dry side a little bit just to kind of press it down on there so we got a little bit too much extra, no big deal. Get the exacto, and the main thing when you're messing with any of it is just, you know, get it a little bit wet. That way it'll kind of prevent it. Have this as a backup. That way, as you do cut it, because um, as you cut, it's going to want to sometimes move away. Okay. All right, so we got that there. So then I'll get uh, kind of reshape my Q-tip here to get a nice little uh, point. Bring that down a little bit. So then from here, kind of press, just try to get the, the two ends to kind of merge up a little bit there at the front. And obviously I want the shape to be so then you'll kind of look and as you as you kind of press up on the eye it'll kind of it'll kind of 
put itself to where the eyelid dried and that'll obviously help because that'll uh... so for this you can do uh... they sell wood duck eye rings um, they're just like little plastic uh, um, you know little sets so what I used to do is <clears throat> you can either do like flex eyes I don't really like flex eyes themselves but if you needed eye rings you could uh, basically cut off the back of it I mean you still want to use like a glass uh, you know glass eye and I also wanted to mention too that on glass eyes a lot of people you know Tohican has really gone up in prices um, some of the specialty species like your surf scoter, cinnamon teal, old squaw, um, and straw for redheads. That's the only ones I actually use Tohican for um, because everything else, Van Dyke sells a, a really nice eye, um, concave, convex, and it's around like half the price. And the, the cool thing about that is uh, half the price it looks nice and that's for stuff with basic eyes like like brown you know brown red yellow um, just your kind of basic thing so I would say that that's a a good you know cost saver there it's something I've kinda of got into a few years or found a few years back when they merged companies and that helped a lot and uh, hopefully that'll help too and uh, and you can buy the eye rings. The only thing with them is that, um, you know, they're flat. So when you have uh, a duck's eye, it's going to be, you know, say this is the plane. It's going to kind of dip down and dip down in the front. So it's, it's not a straight line. It's, you know, it's more like this as opposed to being straight. So if you could, I'm not really sure, I haven't messed with them too much. I mean, I suppose you could probably heat them up or do something to kind of reshape them. But I've always just done this because um, it's it's more cost effective and depending on the, the particular bird, um, it's like a lot of it. I, I like having stuff that kind of fits the bird I have at hand as opposed to, you know, trying to make the bird, you know, fit to something else. So same as like a body or anything else, you know, I'd rather have a small body with extra skin so I could have room to move and work than to have a body that's too tight and I have to, uh, you know, and I have to just try to make it work. And so that's why I like to have, um, same thing with the heads and everything else. So I just, I kind of like to have that little, um, where each bird I have a little bit of wiggle room. And like with this epoxy sculpt, it doesn't take that long. Obviously, I'm just having to explain everything, and uh, normally it's just it's pretty quick. So, but I'll get it wet like that, and I'll kind of just you know all I'm doing here is just kind of working it, um, kind of giving it a little a little lip. Main thing with that with these is just going to be uh, the texturing, and uh, once it kind of gets, I'll I'll set it like this, and then I'll I'll work on the other side. Um, so then generally what I'll do is, as it becomes a, a little bit more rigid, then I can kind of go through and, and give it a few little bumps. Because um, if you do it if you do it too much when it's first when it's first on there, you're going to be pulling it away from the the eye, and it's just going to be a you know cat chasing its dog chasing its tail. But so I'll do. Uh, this eye and it's the same process for the other once you kind of get it on there it'll stick pretty well as long as you're not like shaking it around and then I'll flip them flip her over and do the other side and uh, you know then there you go so but um like this there's a little bit of edge right there so I want to get kind of like I said I'll just kind of get in there get that get that all uh the same thickness basically go back in with my uh look wet q tip here like I said get a little bit of a bump there in the rear and uh and that's that's pretty much <laughs> that's pretty much it so 
Um, you know, and you'll want to make sure that it's uh, covering the eye. There's no, you know, gap or whatever that where you can see the eye, uh, you know, above or below. And then when it does dry, um, what I do is I just use a real, real tiny brush that I'll show in here in just a second. Um, I'll paint it. Just be real careful on that because when you do paint it, um, make sure there's not a lot of excess on the brush because it will uh, it'll leach into the feathers. And when you're painting red like a, a wood duck or a yellow like the hen, um, <clears throat> that's a really hard color to kind of get out. So I'll use a real thin brush and then just kind of, you know, get the paint, dip it in the paint, kind of wipe it off on something. So that way it's not uh, too much on there. And you'll want to make sure you get all um, on the underside of it. And, uh, and then what you'll do is once that dries, uh, take lacquer thinner with the same brush. And then you can kind of, then you can just kind of go back around the edges. And then that'll clean all the, the paint off, you know, clean it. The back in the lacquer thinner, back on the eye. And then... Uh, and then that'll kind of get you all squared away on the on the color. And then uh, from there, I'll uh, I'll take it and I'll do my normal uh, lacquer gloss. So like I have a uh, you know just any lacquer will do, but I'll spray that into a little cup um, so I could get kind of a pool of it. And then I'll dip that in there, and then I'll kind of put it on there like horizontal. And then that way it fills up, you know, make sure it gets all around the edges. And that'll obviously help not only the eye look like he's, like he's alive, but that'll also help it uh, uh, make sure the eye ring is basically sealed onto the bird itself. So, and then that'll wait any time in the future, um, you know, but you could tell, you know, no eye ring, eye ring. So, we got the eye ring on, good to go. Like I said, with wood ducks, you want them to be uh, thicker, obviously, than a normal bird, because that's how they are in real life. So now what I'm doing is I'm just kind of going around and uh, pressing up any places. You know, I just want the real nice classic shape. Um, and you can use a brush. Brush helps, brush helps, too. It's probably actually better to have a brush with uh, um, that you're not going to probably paint with a whole lot or something. And, uh, but anyway, I'm just getting the shape going, and then we'll do the texture in a second, and then that'll be it. So, not too bad. Um, hopefully this kind of shows off. Hopefully a new angle. I'm going to try to do this with a lot of the, uh, the stuff from now on, and, uh, I'm hoping that'll kind of be a better visually to see so all right so we got our eye ring there okay so last thing is I have a little like tool here um, honestly I normally just use um, just make sure it's wet but normally I'll just use an exacto I'll dip it in the water and then I'll just kind of go and make like little ridges like that and so I'll go I'm gonna try it with this because I actually just kind of refound this tool recently and so so I'm just gonna try to go around and uh, just kind of press in ridges all along the uh, the eye ring here and then from that because uh, a wood duck eye ring, just like the ones you see, the artificial, they have the uh, they have the ridges every so often. So I'll kind of give it its shape there, some ridges, and then if you press too hard, I'm trying to kind of think of all the different possibilities here. If you press too hard, no big deal. Then you can go back through and just kind of lightly go over it, and then that'll kind of take off the uh, the roughness of anything. 
That way, uh, you know, you, you just want contour. You're, you want detail, but not, uh, you know, not anything crazy, obviously. So, from here, so I'm just kind of pressing down just to kind of get the, the overall shape that I'm wanting. Until I can get that. Like I said, I just you just really want a nice little corners there, so that's that's shaping up pretty good. So that's pretty much it. So you have a uh, you have that. You do the other side. Um, doesn't take that long to dry. Um, like I said, this is just regular uh, epoxy sculpt, and uh, you know as you can see, there's. There'll be enough for that eye ring, and then still have a big chunk left for, I mean, heck, you could probably do, normally, I, you know, I, normally I should make less in reality, but, you know, I don't know, with both the epoxy skull, for whatever reason, it seems like I always make too much, but anyway, so then from here, it's just drying, and like we talked about, just be careful on the painting, make sure, I mean, you want to make sure that you get all of the, the eye ring and no spots underneath, but, um, you obviously don't be afraid to get it on the eye like get the paint up in there um, and then lacquer thinner clean clean the brush clean the eye clean the brush clean you know back and forth and then uh, gloss it uh, make sure it's a nice you know I, I like the lacquer spray if you get it and then especially after it's been sitting in the cup for uh, even 30 seconds um, and it starts evaporating out a little bit it kind of thickens up and then that way it's it's more like a true kind of resin or gloss where it doesn't run quite as much and uh, once it gets to that stage it's it works out perfect for the eye so anyway guys uh, that's it it was a cool cool bird first uh, blonde wood duck that I think I've done and uh, just a really cool bird and um, so repeat for this other side I'm gonna touch up I still have a little bit of touch up to do on the bill but for the most part anyway I wanted to wait until I got the uh, the eye ring done before I did all that. So, uh, other than that, any other questions? Uh, just let me know. And oh, and I have a, a standing bird will be soon. I have some more uh, uh, king eiders. I think I'm going to be able to do for the standing, just to kind of show. And I'll probably try to show maybe from the time that I have it sewn up or maybe once the head's done and they're ready for the because I think for the standing part the most important thing would be um, uh, the wings uh, pinning that taping etc so anyway uh, I appreciate all the comments and uh, new subscribers uh, you know I said feel free to share or uh, shoot me a comment if there's anything you want to see I think I've gotten to everything so far and uh, we'll go from there all right bye guys